Hey guys, starting a three minute game against a IM I found on chess.com. Switched up my opening a little bit against d4. I played knight f6 on move one. Um, he responded a little unusually with knight f3 on move three. So I'm playing a line I've played in the past. It was actually a specialty of Mike Valvo, who played a number of uh, tournaments in the Midwest in his time. He was an international master. White has to know a thing or two about this line. The idea of a6 is to stop the knight from coming to b5. So I'm going to capture on c3 and I'm going to play e5 next. And then trade queens. And then play f6. Always good if you have a if you see a bishop um, to try to arrange at least two of your pawns connected on the same diagonal as that bishop to blunt its influence. Here he's going to put the bishop on g2, so I think I should probably play this. Knight a5 might be annoying though, and he played it. Not exactly what I had planned. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to give up my light square bishop. So here I'm probably just worse. In fact, I know I'm just worse. I always feel like I'm so negative in these videos. <laughs> Some chess players tend to be on the more positive side when they're evaluating stuff, and others tend to be more negative. It's just a personal style. Well, if I can trade... If I can trade a pair of bishops here, then he won't have the bishop pair advantage. We'll just have bishop versus knight. So I'll make that my goal. Now do this. Make sure he can't play rook d7. Oh. I might have miscalculated though. I forgot about the implications of bishop takes c6. Yeah, now I can't play knight takes d8. So I have to play king takes d8. And he can win a pawn, can't he? Although I have this move. King c7, a3, or bishop e4. Let's do this. I think I'm going to lose the pawn ending if I take on b7. And if I can't take on b7, my options are not good. Let's do this because I think I'm going to lose anyways. <laughs> this might be instructive. He'll bring his king over. I'll try to out-tempo him for now, but it's not going to matter because he has a lot of tempos of this king. He can play king b3, king c3, back and forth. That's probably what he'll do. Yeah, now he's run out of pawn moves to make, so he's going to move his king here. And I can't do much in the meantime.
Yeah, this is going to be too slow. He can play b5, for instance, here. I have to get my king all the way over. King e5, king f5. Far too slow. Yeah, I'll just resign. So that was not great by me. Um, back here, so knight a5 was a great, great idea by him. I've ran into this problem a few times in this line where they, they threaten to play g3, bishop g2. And uh, I try to oppose it with bishop d7 to c6. But knight a5 is a really good retort. Maybe I should have played b6 here. And then after, say, bishop g2, rook a7, he can do this. It's shaky for black, though, still. I have to address this pawn, and knight e6 is a threat. So possibly I misplayed it even earlier. Maybe knight c6 should have been preferred over f6. And then uh, later on, oh, I lost the game by doing this. But later on when I was um, playing bishop b4, that was a clear mistake due to the exchange on d8, the double exchange on d8, and my knight was overloaded. It couldn't um, defend the bishop and also capture on d8 simultaneously. All right, I'm going to try to give this guy a rematch, see if he takes it. So I'm going to stop the recording here. Hope for better luck next game.